Alright, welcome! So in this video we are going to talk about magnitude of vectors. So the magnitude is one of the two things that defines a vector. We have magnitude and direction. So understanding how to find the magnitude of a vector is really important since it's one of its defining features. So we say that the length of a vector v is its magnitude. And the way we denote this is either with a single bar, which looks like absolute value, or we use a double bar, which is often called norm notation. So I like to use the double bar because it distinguishes this to me as a magnitude rather than just finding an absolute value, but you will see it written both ways, so just know that they're often interchangeable. So our goal to start is that we'd like to find a formula for the magnitude of v. So if I give you a vector, it'd be great if you could tell me the magnitude of it using a formula. So let's draw some axes here and talk about what this looks like in two dimensions. So if I have an x and a y axis, then I could have a vector v, which in standard position starts at the origin and ends at the point x1, y1. And so the vector is written as x1, y1 for its components. So in standard position, the length or the magnitude of this vector is just the distance from the point x1, y1 to the origin. So we're really just looking at the length of this vector. We take the distance from the end point to the beginning point. So we could write out that the magnitude of v using that double bar notation is equal to the square root of x1 minus 0 squared plus y1 minus 0 squared. This is our distance formula in two dimensions. So I'm taking the difference in the x value squared plus the difference in the y value squared. Then simplifying this, since my second point is just 0, I have the square root of x1 squared plus y1 squared. Then this extends to three dimensions. So if we have a three dimensional vector v, x1, y1, z1, the magnitude of v is just the three dimensional distance. So it's x1 minus zero squared plus y1 minus zero squared plus z1 minus zero squared, all in the square root. And simplifying, we get the square root of x1 squared plus y1 squared plus z1 squared. So finding the magnitude or the length of a vector is as simple as using these formulas. So we take the x component squared plus the y component squared plus the z component squared and take the square root. Let's try this out on some examples. So let's find the magnitudes of the vectors 5, negative 1 and negative 2, 6, 3. So with these formulas in mind, why don't you pause the video now and try it out and see what you get for the magnitudes of each of these vectors. It's also good practice to be writing these things down to work on your new notation since a lot of this is probably new and it might be the first time you've written these symbols down. All right, so for my first vector, my five, negative one, I'm just gonna call this vector A so that I can write it here. Let's repeat this for my other vector. I'm gonna call the vector negative two, six, three, my B vector. So the magnitude of vector A is the magnitude of the vector five, negative one. And to do this, we take the square root of five squared plus negative one squared. So we take the X component and square it and add it to the Y component squared with the square root. So I'm getting the square root of 25 plus one, which is the square root of 26. And this is my exact answer for the magnitude. So if I asked you for the magnitude of this vector, you could give me square root of 26 as an answer. However, sometimes we wanna get a better sense for what's going on, and so we might calculate an approximate answer based off this exact solution. So when I type this in my calculator, I'm getting about 5.1 this would be my approximate answer for the magnitude of this vector. Okay, let's repeat this for b. So the magnitude of b is the magnitude of negative two, six, three, which is equal to the square root of negative two squared plus six squared plus three squared. So this is just the x component squared, the y component squared, and the z component squared, all added together with the square root. Simplifying this, I'm getting four 
plus 36 plus 9. So that's the square root of 49, which is just 7. So the magnitude of this vector is 7. That means it has a length of 7 units. All right, so these computations aren't too difficult. It just involves assembling the information correctly and getting the square root answer at the end. So there are often some other things we do with magnitude just to make things more interesting and to give us more information about what's going on. So a fact that I've mentioned before that I now want to prove is that scaling a vector, let's say alpha times a vector v, also scales its magnitude by the same factor. So if we look at the magnitude of the vector alpha times v, then this is just equal to whatever the absolute value of alpha is, so we don't look at the negatives here, times the magnitude of v. So the idea is that when you multiply by that alpha, that scaling factor, we're just scaling the magnitude by that amount. So let's talk about how we know this is true using what we know now about magnitude. So I'm going to do almost a formal mathematical proof, but I'm only going to do it in three dimensions, so just know that this would work for an n-dimensional case with a similar argument as well. Let's say that we have a vector v is equal to x, y, and z. Then if we were to multiply alpha times v, where alpha is some scalar, we could distribute that alpha into each component. So we'd have alpha times x, alpha times y, and alpha times z. So I'm interested in this new vector that I've scaled by alpha, and I want to know what its magnitude is. I'm trying to prove what I said before, that it's equal to the absolute value of alpha times the magnitude. So let's consider the magnitude of this new vector alpha times the vector v. So doing this, I'm going to use my magnitude formula. So I take the x component squared, alpha x squared, take the y component squared, alpha y squared, and the z component squared, alpha z squared. And this is all in the square root. Doing this, I get alpha squared x squared plus alpha squared y squared plus alpha squared z squared. Since all of these terms have an alpha squared, I'm going to factor that out. And then, just using a property of square roots, I'm going to write the square root of alpha squared separately and then being multiplied by the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Now, the square root of alpha squared is alpha, just with absolute values, since we can only take square roots of positive values, at least in the real numbers. Then, that second term, the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared, that's just the formula for the magnitude of v. So we end up with what we were hoping, the absolute value of alpha times the magnitude of v. And so this proves our statement that maybe made sense intuitively, but we've now proven it mathematically. Understanding the proof maybe isn't too important at this point, but if you're considering taking more math classes where you might have to write proofs, it's sometimes nice to see these things in this setting. I promise I'm giving you this for a reason. It's going to come in handy when we talk about unit vectors next, but let's do an example really quick before we transition. So for example, let's say that you know the magnitude of some vector u is 5, and you want to find the magnitude of a new vector, negative 2u. So doing this, we could look at the magnitude of negative 2u, and now we know that this is equal to the absolute value of that negative 2, that's our scalar, times the magnitude of u. So the absolute value of negative 2 is 2, and the magnitude of u is 5. We were given that in the problem. So we know the magnitude of this new vector, negative 2u, is 10. So knowing this property can come in handy if you know some magnitude already and you want to find the magnitude of a similar vector. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about with magnitude, and I promise it ties in what we just talked about, is unit vectors. So a unit vector, let's call it v, will have a magnitude of 1. Writing that out with the double var notation, we have the magnitude of v is equal to 1. So the reason we talk about unit vectors is that we like unit vectors for certain situations, especially when we are interested specifically in distance.
So unit vectors, because they have a magnitude of one, provide us a way to just talk about the direction. They're sort of a way to point in a given direction rather than worrying about the length. We can just say the length is one and not worry about it. This is similar to the unit circle, which also had a radius of one. It was a nice way for us to talk about properties of what was going on without worrying about the radius. So another thing that is nice is that we can make any vector into a unit vector by scaling it. Specifically, we're going to scale it by one over the magnitude of that vector. So this is really powerful for us in order to take a vector and make it a unit vector. Then we can just focus on the direction of it. And so it's good for us to know how to do this. So I'm claiming that we can do this by scaling by a factor of one over the magnitude. And let me prove it to you and show you why it works. So let's say we have a vector a, x, y, and z. And again, we could do this in more dimensions or in two dimensions. I'm just going to focus on three dimensions since that's where we've been spending a lot of our time. Then let's consider what I'm suggesting. One over the magnitude of A times the vector A. So we're scaling the vector A by a factor, which is one over the magnitude of A. When we do this, I'm taking one over the magnitude of A times X, Y, and Z. And that factor gets multiplied into each component. So my new components are x over the magnitude of a, y over the magnitude of a, and z over the magnitude of a. So basically we're taking this vector a and dividing each of the components by its length. Now, why are we doing this? Remember, our goal is to get a unit vector that has a length or a magnitude of 1. So I'm claiming that this has a magnitude of 1, but let me show you why. So when we look at the magnitude of this new vector I just found, we're doing the magnitude of 1 over the magnitude of a times a. And this is a scalar. So the thing we are multiplying by, that 1 over the magnitude of a, that's just a scalar. And so I can factor it out of the magnitude. This is that fact coming back from before. So this is really equal to that scalar, 1 over the magnitude of a, times what's left, which is just the magnitude of a. Then we have the magnitude of A divided by the magnitude of A, which is just 1. So the idea is we're taking whatever the current magnitude or length is and just scaling it down to 1 by dividing each of the components by that length. You can imagine if we had a vector of length 3, multiplying by 1 third would scale it to be a unit vector. Let's see what this looks like in an example. Let's find a unit vector that points in the same direction as 2, negative 2, negative 1. So I'm going to try to draw this in three dimensions. It might not be perfect, but let's try it out. So it's going 2 in the positive x direction, then negative 2 in the y direction, and negative 1 in the z. So this vector is kind of pointing down and back if we look at it in three dimensions. So just looking at this, it seems pretty clear to me that this isn't a unit vector yet. It's bigger than having a length of 1. So in order to scale it to have a length of 1, we're going to need to know what the current length is so that we can make it smaller. And I'm going to call it a just to make things easier. So let's find the magnitude of a. I'm doing 2 squared plus a negative 2 squared plus a negative 1 squared, all in the square root. That's 4 plus 4 plus 1, which is the square root of 9. That's 3. So the length of my a vector is 3, and I want to make it have a length of 1. So what we're going to do is do 1 over this magnitude times the vector. So I'm doing 1 third times my vector, 2, negative 2, negative 1. And this is taking each of the components and just dividing it by that magnitude, by the current length. So my new vector is 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds, negative 1 third. And this vector should point in the same direction, but have a length of 1. Basically, we've just shortened the vector to have the proper length we wanted, which is a magnitude of 1. So if you're not totally confident yet, you can always check your work. Let's look at this new vector we created and find its magnitude. So 
what we do is square each component and add them together. I'm doing 2 thirds squared plus negative 2 thirds squared plus a negative 1 third squared. And don't forget your square root. So I'm getting 4 ninths plus 4 ninths plus 1 ninth in my square root. That's 9 ninths, which is just 1. The square root of 1 is 1, and there we go. This vector is a unit vector, so it has a length of 1 and points in the direction we wanted. All right, so that is it for unit vectors and for magnitude of vectors. Just remember, unit vector, divide each component by the current length. And remember, the magnitude formula is just the distance formula in however many dimensions you're working with. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.